Though I understood why people enjoyed the early Tomb Raider games, I never really got into the series during my youth, most in part thanks to trying out the first three iterations and discovering clunky controls, weird camera angles, and complicated scenarios that hindered my progression of the games. I essentially gave up trying to embrace my inner Tomb Raider after Tomb Raider 3 in 1998. Fast forward some 15 years later and the entire scope of gaming had changed, as did the adventures of Tomb Raider's central character, Lara Croft. Looking to regain the positive notoriety that was once associated with the franchise, Crystal Dynamics under the Square Enix banner restarted the series featuring a more humanized Croft, dealing with the pressures of being a simple explorer trapped in a Japanese island with religious zealots and murderers, having to craft, kill, and climb her way to safety and eventual enlightenment. The gameplay was very similar to games like Uncharted and The Last of Us, feeling right at home with the current crop of action-adventure games, while retaining the exploration of tombs and usage of puzzles that was seen in previous Tomb Raider games. Taking the plunge, I found myself thoroughly enjoying Tomb Raider 2013, blasting through the main story in less than a week. Three years later came its sequel, and while not having the great drama and characterization of the previous entry, the gameplay improved upon its original's foundation in marvelous ways. With the third entry in this rebooted trilogy now arriving, it was time to see if the origin story of everyone's favorite looter of the dead still has enough to keep things interesting, or if this experience will have to rely heavily on the strength of his gameplay yet again. Taking up where the previous game left off, Lara Croft is an adventurous woman looking to explore the world, uncover great mysteries people wouldn't even believe existed, and avenge the death of her murdered father by taking down a shadow organization. Similar to the previous Tomb Raider games, my goals were simple. Complete the main story and finish all the optional challenge tombs and side missions, with the latter being nothing more than exaggerated fetch quest or opportunities to talk to townspeople to learn their stories of salvation and survival. Lasting around 10 hours, the game's plot takes you through hazardous jungles, abandoned ruins, and the watery depths. Hidden throughout these semi-open world areas are challenge tombs, where the player can really get to raiding by solving somewhat complicated puzzles that, when completed, allow Laura to gain beneficial abilities. These tasks I set for myself were accomplished fairly quickly at 14 hours or so. Similar to Rise of the Tomb Raider before it, Shadow of the Tomb Raider had all the makings of improving upon everything crafted for the past two games without raising the bar too high and alienating fans both old and recent. Not much has changed in the way Lara controls. The series' heroine can still jump, climb, crawl, dodge, and most importantly, kill her way to survival. Grabbing onto walls with her trusty axe, rappelling down into the depths, and swinging across dangerous gorges is almost a walk in the park for Lara at this point. One of the biggest critiques when it came to the 2013 reboot and Rise was the lack of focus on exploration and puzzles. Shadow mostly fixes this problem by featuring several puzzles the player must complete to advance the story that can really be brain twisters. Scattered across the map are the returning challenge tombs that Croft can enter and solve not necessarily in a variety of ways, but are grandiose enough to feel epic with an added bonus of learning new skills with each completed tomb, including faster regenerating health and Lara being able to hold her breath longer while underwater. The reintroduction of underwater sequences in the series are both a blessing and a curse with the latter featuring eels and piranhas that Laura must hide from in tall seaweed until a moment arises, something that can be a problem thanks to the camera being unable to move properly in tight places underwater. 
Underwater sections in this game can be a nice change of pace, but sometimes go on too long to be entertaining after experiencing them a couple of times. Also taking a page out of Ryze's playbook is the focus on stealth over firefights when it comes to combat. While gun battles do occur, there are a lot less variations outside of the force moments when Lara must shoot her way into another area, or when Croft is spotted, and it's wiser to run and lose the attention of her pursuers rather than shoot her way to victory. Though Lara can become easily overpowered when she's given a machine gun, tying into the greater implementation of attacking without being seen, Shadow introduces a slight stealth system, with Laura being able to cover herself in mud to hide in plain sight thanks to nearby nasty walls. There are also clothing design choices Laura can use to make herself even harder to spot by enemies, or just look like a high resolution model of her Tomb Raider 2 version. Sadly, gunplay is actually better than in the previous games, but the moments of usage are so few and far between it's hard to discover the improvements until the last couple of hours. Lara's patented bow and arrow is also back, and is deadlier than ever, with various arrows including a fear or berserk style arrow that can cause enemy friendly fire. Human enemy AI is actually pretty dumb by standing around explosive barrels, walking into traps without a second thought, and rarely noticing a body hanging from a tree no more than 8 feet tall. Really, only two enemy types, jaguars and underworld beings, pose much of a threat by being somewhat unpredictable in the heat of combat no matter the difficulty level. Projectiles can be used as both distraction devices and weapons, such as molotovs and smoke grenades. For some odd reason, items that can be thrown are dropped by Lara when she stands beside a wall to enter stealth. The game also has a skill tree that is actually too beefy for its own good, as a majority of the abilities aren't needed and more than likely won't even be used by the player without trying. Laura's crafting abilities are just as strong as ever, with her being able to even make shotgun shells with her bare hands. Crafting on the fly is definitely a great benefit in this game. For all the improvements in regards to exploration of a semi-open world, featuring almost too many collectibles and tomb raiding over combat oriented action, the story leaves a lot to be desired yet again. In the 2013 reboot, the personal journey of Lara discovering her inner survivalist was monumental for the franchise. In Shadow, Lara is in a race against time to stop the end of the world as the evil organization Trinity is on the hunt for items that can quote unquote remake the world. The initial promise of Shadow's story is quickly lost when the main villain proves to be schizophrenic in his thinking and actions that just somehow fall into place alongside Laura's traveling. Shadow's plot may not be great, but the characters and voice acting is phenomenal, featuring great sequences between Laura and now series veteran Jonah, as well as the solemn moments when Croft arrives in a hidden city. For a short time, the player will also see what it was like for Laura as a child. This short section featuring an adolescent Laura is actually one of the best parts of the story for being not only a nice change of pace, but also because it fleshes out the dynamics of the Croft family when Laura was a youth. It's rather unfortunate from a narrative perspective, the quality in this trilogy has gone down with each sequel. Fans of Rise's online expedition mode will be disappointed as no online options are available upon the game's release, with no tentative date to explore challenge tombs with friends. One of the most impressive additions to the franchise are customizable difficulty options, including turning down hints as to what walls are climbable by removing the white paint indicator or making puzzles simpler to complete. Graphically, the game looks somewhat better than its predecessor from a character model perspective. Though the robotic nature of everyone when talking face to face outside of cutscenes is definitely off-putting. The world itself is absolutely gorgeous no matter where Laura is, 
underwater, swinging through the jungle, or avoiding fire spewing mechanisms. Technically though, Shadow struggles. Certain cutscenes fail to load properly no matter what you're playing on, and even go out of sync in regards to audio. Frame rate drops can occur and, most importantly in regards to platforming, the game can be finicky in regards to Lara sticking that dire landing. Shadow doesn't attempt to reinvent the wheel, but doesn't do much to improve upon what came before it either. The gameplay is as solid as it's ever been, while graphically and mostly technically, it's fine. Combat and the puzzles are very fun, but for the finale of a trilogy, Shadow definitely feels lacking in the story and innovation departments when not only stacked against its contemporaries, but also compared to its own predecessors. Fans of the franchise dating back to the original PlayStation days have lambasted the last two games for moving away from what made those first iterations so memorable. Shadow mostly fixes the exploration to combat ratio that plagued the last two games, but fails to overcome the benchmark set by the 2013 reboot in regards to the plot. Players who enjoyed the past two Tomb Raider experiences will definitely love the gameplay, especially if the player doesn't care about the narrative. Even gamers who didn't wholly care for what the franchise has become may like certain aspects of Shadow. No matter what side of the fence you fall on, Shadow of the Tomb Raider doesn't feel worthy of a full price purchase. Due to how much it feels like Rise of the Tomb Raider, without a better narrative and enemy AI still lacking in being effective adversaries. Definitely check this one out, but wait till it's on sale, unless you have a thing for watching Laura be gruesomely killed, or her doing the killing, like she's Rambo Croft. <laughs>